Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving an interesting equation. This equation is interesting in many ways. First of all, we have A, which is called a parameter. So as A changes, the solutions change. We'll talk about that. And also, this is a non-standard equation because we have an exponential function on the left-hand side and a radical function on the right-hand side. If you want to call this a radical equation, because we're going to talk about some radical ideas. Per, uh, parametric equations are interesting, and I don't think there is a lot of li literature in English, uh, but you can find quite a few books in Russian. So those are really, really good material. Anyways, um, let's go ahead and take a look at the graph of this in Desmos first. We're going to play with the graph a little bit, and I'm going to come back to this, and we'll talk about um, the solution. So we're basically going to be solving this for several different values of a, or all possible values of a. For example, you can think about what happens if a is equal to 1, what happens if a is 0, what happens if a is 1 million, if a is greater than 5, whatever, so on and so forth. So there's a lot of different ways we can talk about this. But let's go ahead and take a look at the graph first. So here's our graph in Desmos. So basically, I graph y equals e to the power x and y equals square root of x plus a for you. And then I had to set an a value because this is basically a ruler. You can basically change the value. If you want to set a equal to 0, you can. It's kind of hard to stay there, but... Anyways, if a is 0, you're basically talking about square root of x and e to the power of x. Obviously, these two graphs do not intersect. And I could probably make this, uh, you know, improve this graph a little bit better. Like, let's make it, I don't know, 4. And let's also make this one 4. Let's make it a little bigger so you can see better. Okay, hopefully this is better. Now, notice that these two graphs do not intersect for a equals 0. So if you were solving it, you would say, hey, for a equals 0, it doesn't, uh, there, are, there are no solutions. But are you going to go through all the values, like infinitely many? That's something you don't want to do. That's why we need a systematic solution, and we'll talk about that when we get back to the problem. But notice that as I change this, the values of a, the graphs are going to get closer. Uh, I mean, the radical graph is going to move on the x-axis. You can see where it um, has an x-intercept. If you set it equal to 0, it, it's going to be negative a comma 0, right? And for certain uh, values of a, like kind of larger values, right? S larger than a certain value, uh, you get uh, two solutions. They intersect at two points. And if you kind of do it very carefully, and you can definitely do this in Desmos, uh, as the values get closer to 0 0.7, you're going to see that the graphs are pretty close. And at one point, they're going to be tangent. So that's going to be our uh, starting point. So let's go back to the problem and explore a little further using a little bit of calculus. So here's our problem, and we kind of looked at the graph of it. And now let's go ahead and do the following. I want these two graphs to be tangent to each other. So I have a to the x, and I have the other one. When would they touch each other? If I can find it, it will be very helpful. So for that, basically, we, first of all, we want them to intersect. So they're going to have a common point. And let's call the x-coordinate of that point z. I don't know why I picked z here. Uh, you can pick anything. Don't pick y, because y is for the y-coordinate, anyways. And uh, so if I call this function f of x and call this one g of x, I do need the following. f of z equals g of z. That means they intersect at z comma whatever. All right? So let's go ahead and take a look at it. It's going to give me e to the z equals square root of z plus a. Now, we have two unknowns, which is not good. And we have to solve for all values of a, sort of. But I want to find where they're tangent first. So I basically want, I'm looking for the a value for which these two graphs are tangent first. And then we can talk about other things. OK? I do need another equation, so and that's going to come from the fact that these two curves are tangent. So they're going to have a common tangent at this point. And that tangent, actually the slope of that tangent, is going to be the same for these two functions because it's the same line. So how do you find slopes? You take the derivative of the function. Let's go ahead and differentiate f of x, which is e to the x. Differentiate g of x, which is... 1 over 2 times square root of x plus a. If you're not familiar with the derivative of the square root function, take a look at the formula. Fairly easy to do. So now I'm going to go ahead and replace x with z again, f prime of z. And that should equal g prime of z because they're both equal to the slope of the 
it's about to write that the slope of the tangent okay slope of the tangent is the same for both functions so we're going to go ahead and plug it in and set them equal to each other if you replace x with z in f prime you get e to the z g prime gives you one over two times the square root of z plus a again this is another equation with two variables this looks complicated but if you put these two together this one and this one then it's going to be a lot easier so let's go ahead and do that next i'm going to go ahead and copy that equation here what was that equation e to the z oops still on the eraser equals square root of z plus a now notice that these two are both equal to e to the power z right and some people are going to complain about penmanship so let me go ahead and write it in a nicer way here you go so now since these are equal we can also talk about the equality of the right hand side so in other words one over two times the square root of z plus a must be the same as the square root of z plus a and this is awesome because if you try to solve this equation this is non-standard and it has two variables crazy forget about it but when you put it together as a system it's really nice anyways um let's go ahead and cross multiply we get two times square root of something times itself it's gonna give us what's inside radicand equals one such a weird name i don't know who came up with this and then from here z plus a is gonna be one half great but not so great because i still have two variables but guess what you can substitute how in the first one or the second one i like the second equation better so let's use it e to the z equals square root of z plus a but z plus a is one half so this is square root of one half but that can be written as square root of one, one over square root of two or square root of two over two awesome it's awesome because now i have e to the power z i can find z right to z or not to z uh, how do you find z from here you can basically let's move this a little bit to the right we can basically ln both sides the natural log of e to the z is going to be z so z equals ln root 2 over 2 it can be written in so many different ways but i'm just going to leave it at that oopsies the next page is the graph so we need to finish this up okay great so now uh, by the way in addition to showing you that dynamic graph i also made a graph for you so you can kind of see where they're tangent exactly we haven't found it yet so we're still getting there but we found the z value remember i was looking for the a value for which uh they're tangent so to find the a value i'm going to use this equation a is basically one half minus z and z is known so a is going to be one half minus ln root two over two so let's go ahead and take a look at the graph and we're going to try to interpret this value and also briefly talk about what happens if x values are greater than this and less than that whatever so on and so forth so here's our a value for which these curves are tangent and a is about 0 0.84 remember on our graph it was 0 0.7 ish and this is where they are tangent right the point of tangency so if a b values become larger so in other words if a is greater than one half minus ln root two over two then you're going to have two solution if a is less than that you're going to have no solution because they will not intersect and this brings us to the end of this video thank you for watching i hope you enjoyed it please let me know don't forget to comment like and subscribe i'll see you tomorrow with another video until then be safe take care and bye bye